Hello, welcome to another episode of Chaotic Torture RC. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit different for the channel. Uh, it's going to be a bit of me talking about the history of my dealing with RC, my opinions on things, and I'm going to ask my viewers questions. That way I know what kind of video content I can get out there that you all like. Uh, first of all, I, you know, I'll just ask are the viewers and subscribers that I have right now, are you more into the review, unboxing of products, testing of new things, or would you rather just see generalized running of the vehicles or the maintenance and upkeep, or is it just, uh, are you all content with the way the channel's been going with a collaboration of everything on how I've been doing it? Uh, I've bounced all over the place with the channel, uh, trying to see which ones gets the most views, which one gets more likes. Because I'm into every aspect of the hobby. I do water stuff, I do flying, I do the crawler, I bash. I do everything aside from racing, and uh, I'm trying to get a balance with the channel here. And then I figured with that I would get some input from you guys. I've got airbrush equipment, I do custom airbrush work, is that something people would be interested in watching and seeing. Um, please, those that view this, uh, if you get a chance, please watch it from beginning to end as I'm going to take any information and input that is commented into this video to heart. That way I can produce videos that you all want to see. Um, and also, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how things in the industry have changed from when I first started RC to where they are today. Um, I started back in the days where with the uh, Kaisha Ultima and the uh, RC10 gold pan chassis cars. Back then, your uh, hop-up options were very limited. Um, there weren't, weren't much upgrades. RPM was one of the companies that came around and started making some parts for the uh, RC10. I remember they were uh, when they made the white plastic dialable parts. And to the day, RPM still in the business. Um, on that note, with upgrades, I get asked a lot of times from people that I run with. Um, I've had some people ask me through email, um, what do you do this, or what would you change here, what part should I upgrade here. And I can tell you, generally speaking, if you're just a person that's going to run, like for your trail trucks, if you're just running and crawling and running axial-based products, a stock axial is fine. Um, with the SCX-10, probably their biggest, weakest point on that would be the steering linkage and eventually the links if you got the uh, ready-to-run that comes with the plastic links because they will eventually soften up and start to bind and twist on you. Um, you don't have to go buy anything name brand wise. You can actually make your own out of all threads, some brake tube and some Traxxas Revo ball ends. Um, I will say this. Stay away from the companies that make the uh, links and the steering pieces that have the pressed ball ends already in them all one separate piece. Um, if you're going to get anything, uh, be sure that your uh, rod ends thread on because the uh, all one piece pop in deal over time that aluminum and metal rubbing against each other will wear out and tends to uh, fall apart and then you've got a uh, product that's no longer usable it's uh... and i've tried them several different companies make it out there and it just doesn't last so that's my one big advice on that stay away from the uh... some of the lower grade companies that are making the all one piece if you're going to get links and steering pieces be sure that you can thread the ball ends that way if you strip a ball end out break something you unthread it put a new one in um, or you can go the route with uh, making your own I've got a guy that I run and trail with he's got the uh, deadbolt SCX10 deadbolt he sat down with another guy that we ran with one evening they made all links with all thread brake tubing to sleeve it uh, tracks this Revo ball ends and I'm not gonna lie his truck will sit there and run all day long with the best of them he did eventually upgrade his shocks. He didn't necessarily need to. I think his truck ran better before he upgraded the shocks. Anyways, um, upgrades aren't always necessary. And I see on a lot of threads where people are dumping two grand or better in their trucks. 
it's nice if you can do that it's not necessary I want my viewers to realize just because I'm putting an upgrade into my truck doesn't mean you have to um, I only upgrade where I feel I need to because everybody runs differently now with me I run a little more aggressively I tend to be a little more hard on my vehicles so I do have a certain criteria of parts that I know that I'm gonna break because I broke it time after time after time after time now I've also taken the same trucks purposely not run them the same way as what I normally would like to run them and the parts that I break have not broke so that just all shows that it's all to my driving style now like with your bashers you know you people that run the tracks of slashes uh, my my main upgrades with any tracks of slash is going to be the drive shafts even the uh, plastic heavy duty drive shaft that Tractus makes I don't like them um, a lot of people run a bash energy I do not have a problem with certain energy parts not all energy parts are good but my last slash that I sold to a friend of mine that's still running it today but I did keep the drive shafts to put on a different one I was running Energy HD, which is for heavy duty, Traxxas four wheel drive slash shafts. I run those for three years before I ever broke the first one. And anybody that knows me or has seen any of my videos that I posted on my Facebook page before I started this channel, I beat the snot out of my slash. I set a jump outside, run it on 3S, jump it as hard as I could at full speed. I eventually put a Traxxas Revo brushless system in it. I was running my slash on 6S, doing the same thing with it. And it took three years before I ever broke the first part of my shafts. So that being said, they held up better. I did have MIP. I snapped the uh, MIP shafts within three weeks, I think. And I've also got a Traxxas Revo that's got a little bit of upgrades on a whole lot to it. And it's got MIP shafts that came on it when I got it. And I've got video of me breaking them. I am not a fan of MIP too often. Now in your crawlers, yeah, they're okay. Um, so when you're buying a decent quality name band brand product, there's usually not a whole lot that you absolutely have to change. It's all personal choice and preference. Uh, I've, I've read on a lot of social media where people are bashing. People say, well, my truck is better than yours because I've got this and this and it. I'm going to tell you right now, I've seen a complete stock truck outrun some of the most modified trucks on trails. Um, a lot of it is just the drivability of a vehicle um, and knowing how to pick a line. So, with that being said, my goal with my channel is I want to get some of the new beginners into the hobby. I want to get their attention. I want to get their interest. Uh, I do all my upgrades on a budget. I don't have... A whole lot of money like some of the big guys have to dump into there I do have a few companies that are supporting me that either donate parts to me I don't want to say donate they send free parts to me I've got a few companies that uh, sell parts to me cheap at a discount and then I've got a few companies that from time to time will send me a product to test and let them know what I think of it but other than that everything else comes out of my pocket and I'm lucky and fortunate enough to have a family that supports me and my hobby and what I do and that's what this channel is basically all about. I want to know what you guys want to see, and I also want to be able to produce video content that is directed more towards what you all would rather view. But I also want the beginners to feel like when I'm talking, I'm talking to them as well as some of the more experienced uh, guys out there. Because um, I've got a 27 years worth of knowledge in the hobby and I've got a thing that I've been doing as my tech tip Sunday I'm going to continue to do that regardless of what you all want me to do video wise Because I've got a lot of knowledge of things that I can share with people that When you're in a bind it may be able to help you um, And I'm sure some sometimes when I'm out in the field and have some incidents happen I might break a tool out and do a repair right there on the spot and maybe give some tips on that to help do it. Uh, I've got a few friends that I have was trailing with on a regular basis on weekends there for a while and some of them were just amazed with how quick that I could wrench, tear down and put back together a vehicle. And doing it either sitting down on a stump, doing it on a step, sitting down with the parts in my lap and being able to work on it. That just comes from... Uh, 
I don't know, I'm an impatient person, very, very impatient, and when I start doing something, I kind of want it done right now, so I tend to work fast when it comes to doing the things that I want done. Now, if it's something I don't want done, I procrastinate like anybody else would. Um, anyways, I'm going to conclude this video for now. Please input in the comment section, you know, what type of videos you would like to see, whether it be unboxing and reviews of new product, uh, reviews of product after it's been bashed on, uh, just trailing bashing videos, um, any input and information at this point would be really helpful for me, be helpful for you all, and I appreciate those that have subscribed and stayed subscribed and are watching my channel on a regular basis, and uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so if you're watching this video and seeing my channels for the first time. Uh, thank you all and have a good day.